In this video, we're going to learn how to set a fire rate and reload speed mechanics to your projectile weapons in Horizon Worlds. Stick around. Hi guys, my name is Tony and welcome back to Jackal Dude Gaming. Here, I like to have fun in VR, but I love helping you have fun there too. Today, we have another Horizon tutorial that is actually a follow-up to my last video where we learned how to shoot a projectile weapon again, as well as setting an ammo value and a reload mechanic to your projectile weapons. If you haven't watched that video yet, I will link it right up here and in the description below. In this video, we're going to give those mechanics just some more meat. We don't want everything to feel so instantaneous, so we're going to give a little bit of like cooldown values to both of those things. So we're going to make it so our weapon can't fire more than every half second or so. And then we're also going to make sure the weapon can't fire while we're reloading it. We're going to give that a certain time limit. But that hold reload mechanic is only temporary because in a later video, we're going to learn how to reload our weapons magazine style by slamming another object to the bottom of our projectile weapon and reloading it that way. Now, if you want to see how we do that in the next video, be sure to like this one so I know you're interested and think about subscribing and clicking that bell notification so you know exactly when that next one drops. So, there's a lot of work to do today. Let's get started. So now, we can shoot six times hit a button to reload and shoot six more times. Now, that's ideally what we want, but the thing is, if you look what I'm doing now, it doesn't really seem like I have to reload. Just a simple button press to instantly get six more shots doesn't really seem like a good game mechanic. So in this section, we're gonna adjust the code we made to then make it a little more challenging, a little more like a game. So we're going to go back into the script. We're gonna alter what we have by adding a delay to your shots, and we're also gonna add a longer delay to the time it takes to reload. So let's do that now. Back into build mode, here's our script. Let's say this is a really powerful gun and we just can't shoot it endlessly. So we want to have a small delay in between each shot. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna make a Boolean variable. We're gonna hit variable, make new variable and we're going to call this variable can fire can fire and we're going to change this to a boolean type a boolean type can only be true or false so we'll set this to true by default but it can only be true or false so we're going to use this to determine whether we can shoot or not so we're going to adjust our if statement basically what we want it to say is if current ammo is greater than zero, we're going to keep that. And if can fire equals true, then we can launch a projectile. Does that make sense? I'll show you. So we're just going to make a whole new if statement. And then we're going to go to the operators tab and we're going to grab the and logic. The and logic means both statement A and statement B will have to equal true for the if statement to continue. So we can grab, we can just grab this right here in the blue and drag that over here. Sweet, so if current ammo is greater than zero and if we wanna grab can fire equals true. So whenever you put a Boolean variable in by itself, we're just assuming you mean if true. So it works like this, but we can just to make it a little more uh, understandable, we can put the equals logic here. And then we can say if can fire and then get a Boolean input from the values tab equals true. Both of what I just did w equals the same thing. So if I put can fire in by itself, it's the same as saying can fire equals true. But if I wanted to say, yeah, for whatever reason, you can only shoot if can fire equals false, I would have to do it like this and switch that to false. Okay, so we're going to leave it like that just so it looks better and maybe you can understand it a little better. Perfect. So then we're going to drag these back up to our new if statement and we'll just get rid of that one. Okay, ideally, if we want can fire to be true to fire, we have to turn it off at some time. We have to make it false. So we will grab another set to by going to value, scrolling up, 
grab set to, plop that here. We're going to grab the Boolean variable can fire here. Whoops. Then we're going to grab another Boolean input by going to values, scrolling down to Boolean, plopping that here, and then Yep, it automatically went to false. So now whenever we shoot the gun, we're gonna make sure our ammo is greater than zero and we're gonna make sure can fire equals true. If both those things are true, we will launch the projectile, then we will subtract one from current ammo and then we'll switch can fire to false, making you delay a little bit, right? Because now, even if you have ammo, even if ammo still equals greater than zero, you can't fire because can fire equals false. How do we turn can fire back on with an amount of time? Well, we're going to send an event to ourselves with a delay. So we'll go over to events and under event actions, we will send event with delay and we'll plop that right here at the bottom. And we're going to leave this as my event, but you can call it whatever you want. We can add a new event. You know, we're going to change it, I guess. <laughs> Hit new event and we're going to say uh we're just gonna call this uh shot time shot time sure confirm but you can name that event whatever you like so we're gonna send shot time to ourself after some time we don't want a whole second how about we do a half a second so we can shoot the gun once every half a second perfect um now we have to determine what happens when we receive shot time so we will go back under the events tab and grab when event is received. Put that right in between these two. Change this to shot time, the event we just made. If you make any events, they will appear in this drop down. See right here. Shot time. When we receive shot time, all we're going to do with this is change can fire to true. So we can actually just take this set can fire to false. Grab that. Drag it under here and with our hand here, hit the duplicate tool. Bloop. Whoa, I did it twice. We'll take one of these and delete it. So set can fall and we wanna switch this to true. Okay, so let's go over this, what's happening. If our ammo is greater than zero and can fire equals true, we're gonna launch a projectile. We're gonna take one away from current ammo. Then we're gonna, we're gonna change can fire to false. Then we are gonna send shoot time in a half a second. When we receive shoot time, we're going to reset can fire to true. So then now that can fire is true, and if we still have more ammo left in current ammo, we'll be able to then shoot again. Let's go test that real quick, okay? So we're gonna go into the world. We're gonna grab our gun. Bam. See, I'm spamming the trigger, but I can only shoot every half a second. So this is me just spamming the trigger. See how now there's a delay? I probably hit this thing like 20 times before I got through all six shots. Making the gun feel more important, like every shot is a little more powerful and the gun needs to kind of like rotate a chamber or something to be able to fire again. Okay. Now we wanna kind of do the same thing with reloading, right? We know reloading or even recharging a sci-fi gun doesn't happen instantly. We want it to take some time. So we're gonna do a very similar thing to our shot delay. So we're gonna make another event. We're gonna send event with delay, delay. And let's name this event, we'll go new event and we'll just call this reload. Perfect. And let's say reloading takes a whole three seconds. When event is received, we're gonna grab that again, plop that down underneath. We're gonna change this to reload, the reload event. When we get the reload event, then we will set current ammo to max ammo. So we're gonna actually drag this away, not duplicate, but drag it off of there and under the reload event. But now there's one problem I see happening and let me show you what it is. Let's go into the world. We're gonna grab our gun. One, two, two, three. Let's say I want to reload now. It's going to take three seconds. I hit the reload button, but guess what? I still had three shots in the chamber. I don't think we want to be able to shoot any rounds while the gun is reloading. So what we can do before we send the reload event, we're actually going to set current ammo to zero. 
So we're going to get another set to put that here. We're going to we're going to grab the current ammo variable, plop that there, and then we're going to grab the number variable and plop that here. And leave that to zero. So we'll set current ammo to zero, then send the event over three seconds, and then we will reset current ammo to max ammo. Hopefully that all makes sense. And now you shouldn't be able to shoot the gun while you are reloading. So let's go in and test that out. I'm going to shoot one, two, three times. So I technically have three more shots here. I'm going to hit the reload button and see if I can still shoot. Reload. And look, nothing's happening. And then three seconds later, I'm able to shoot again every half second. So just adding some of these time gates to your firing mechanics, to your reloading mechanics, really gives your gun a sense of uniqueness. There you have it. Now with these mechanics, we've added some time values to them. So whenever your players use them, they kind of have to think more about when they're taking their shots and when they're deciding to reload. I really just wanted to show you that you could take something simple like a projectile launcher and slowly add a mechanic to it until you have something really special. So if you liked this, if it was helpful at all, please give this a thumbs up and think about subscribing so I can give you more tutorials in the future. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.